here it is, the new Mi Coffee Apex Espresso Maker. On the surface, it looks like a pretty standard espresso machine, but I think it's actually a much more interesting device that deserves some special attention. So as the name of this video suggests, this espresso machine is giving me serious DF vibes. And in case you've been in a coma for the last three years, when I say DF, I'm of course referring to the DF grinders. There's one of them behind me. There are a couple of very interesting things about the DF grinders. At first, they offer features that were kind of high-end and exclusive before, but now they have helped to level the playing field and made these features available in what you could call a more budget level. Two, they were sold all over the world under different names. So in some countries, you would have one name and other places they would be rebranded in a different way. So that's the kind of thing that's called white label or OEM production. And I think it's the first time in the world of coffee that these white label products almost became more popular than the label products. Uh, it did feel like a little bit of a DF eruption. The third thing about the DF grinders is that they would often have some weird questionable decisions and then they would fix the damage with small incremental upgrades. So for that reason you had DF64 version 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and now there's even a generation 2. So for this review I'll try to evaluate the Apex and see how it fits into that DF ecosystem. And I think I can already say point 1 and 2 are pretty clear. This espresso machine offers so much value for the money. You have adjustable PID, uh, you have adjustable pre-infusion, it uses a 58 millimeter porter filter, and it has one boiler for brewing and then a separate thermal block for steaming. And all this you get at a price point that is somewhere around the typical entry-level uh, favorites such as uh, Gadget Classic, Bravo Bambino Plus. Actually, it's quite a bit cheaper than the Rensselaer Sylvia. So in my opinion, at least on paper, you get a kind of disruption level functionality for a very moderate price. Point number two, sold under different names. Yes, I think we can also check that one off. I got this device from uh, Me Coffee, who were kind enough to send one for a review, and it's sold as uh, Me Coffee Apex in the US. But pretty quickly, I realized that I had seen this machine somewhere before. And uh, yes, I realized it is the same machine that's used for the Kaff Machino. And that was a kind of espresso maker project where some people are building a tablet with some software that can connect to the device and then it will work kind of as a poor man's decent. And then from the Kaff Machino, it was pretty easy to find out online that uh, this machine actually had been available in Hungary for some years already. Over there, it sold under the catchy name AVX DB1. In China, there are machines called uh, Gimelai and ITOP that look very similar. In the Philippines, there's one called uh, Kori Aiko. And in the US, besides Me Coffee, it's also going to be sold under the Turin brand. So yes, I think we can assume that this is going to be quite similar to the DF64 and it will be available in a bunch of different countries, sold under a lot of different names. Now let's get on to the third big question. And that is whether there are any weird uh, design decisions for this espresso maker. And I can say already now, spoiler alert, yes, there are a couple. Uh, let's just do a quick tour of the pros and cons and then you'll see. So the first thing you notice about the machine when you open the box is that it has a pretty nice size, I will say, probably somewhere between the Gacha Classic and the Rensselaer Ustelvia. Then the machine also comes with some pretty nice accessories. You have a decent tamper. There's this uh, single dose basket here that actually uh, works quite well. It's rare to have good single dose baskets. It also comes with a little insert so you can back flush the machine. And uh, then there's also a cleaning tool here so you don't have to buy that separately. And then you have this uh, porter filter here. I will actually say this is a pretty nice quality of a uh, porter filter. The only little thing is the handle, it's plastic and the finish is not the nicest looking one. But on the other hand, it's very easy just to screw off like so. And then, then if you have a nice handle at home from another portal filter, you can just put that in very easily. And voila, now it's already looking a little bit more stylish. I know some similar of these uh, budget rivals, for instance, Gacha Classic, you'll need a special Gacha naked portal filter uh, for it to fit. With uh, Lilit Espresso Makers, they will have a lot of uh, accessories in the 57mm size. But with this one here, it's pretty plug and play. 
and uh, you will have access to many accessories. The water tank is a good size and it is detachable for easy refill. The drip tray, I will say, it's okay. It's a little bit utilitarian looking, but you got this little float here that will indicate when it needs to be emptied, which is a really nice thing. You also have this little LED lamp here that is lit on when the machine is on. So that means that you can see what's going on at the drip tray really easily. And then you also have this little display here, which also doubles as a timer when the machine is either brewing or steaming. So this is a really nice feature. Now let's talk about the brewing process itself. If you're familiar with semi-automatic espresso machines, it's pretty straightforward. But what's better on this machine compared to the Gajas, the Rancilios, is that it has a single boiler only for brewing. So that means that you'll have a lot more temperature stability and also you don't need to purge hot water uh, when you're brewing as part of your routine. Already for me, that's enough to say that I like this machine purging and temperature surfing. It's just not fun and it's not really something you'd want to do to an espresso machine in 2023, almost 2024. What's more cool is that you also have this uh, built-in PID, so you can actually control the temperature up and down depending on uh, what you need. I know that it's not 100% accurate because if you set the boiler temperature to 102, it's uh, not going to expel near boiling water that's kind of hissing and steaming when it says it's reached the temperature, but instead you'll have to wait a couple of more minutes and then the water uh, will get up to temperature. And then when you actually press the brew button, then you'll see that the uh, kind of the steaming water comes out. But overall, I will say if you just give the PID and the boiler a little bit of time to get up to temperature, if you're going to change it or between brews, then it's going to feel quite uh, accurate. Personally, I'm very sensitive to shots brewed with uh, water that's too cold and that's not going to be a problem with this machine. Similarly, you're not going to get water that's too hot and steamy coming out. So these are the two extremes that you want to avoid, and uh, this machine does that. The next interesting feature is the adjustable pre-infusion. At first, I was really excited about this uh, feature, but in daily use, it's just not as good as expected. And I'm sorry to say, but we're starting to get into uh, DF version 1 territory here. At first, the pre-infusion feature seems really cool, but then you press the button and then you see how much uh, water actually comes out. So let's just demonstrate here. So now I'm going to disable the feature. Okay. And you have 6.5 grams of uh, pre-infusion. So it's only engaging the pump for one second and then the rest of the pre-infusion time, uh, nothing actually happens. Uh, so the water amount is just tiny. You will always have somewhere around 5 to 10 milliliters coming out and uh, that will have no chance to saturate the puck, at least not for a regular double shot. Maybe if you make a tiny shot with a single dose basket, it can do something. But overall, I will say this kind of pre-infusion is pretty useless and probably also a little bit harmful. I did talk to Luke from Me Coffee about this to see if there was a problem with my unit but he observed the same thing uh, with his machine and he said that he will try to talk to the factory to get a better solution. I think actually just extending the pump for a few more seconds that would likely do the job and you would have enough water to fully saturate the whole puck. Hopefully this device will one day have a really cool pre-infusion but at the moment I will suggest that you just don't use it at all since it's probably doing more harm than good. Now let's brew a shot and then uh, go a bit more in depth. And as you can see, the shot ran in a pretty good time. It looked pretty even. And now let's just taste it. Very good, no complaints whatsoever. Just a nice balanced taste. Of course, the machine plays a part here, but the other part of the equation is the grinder. 
and I'm using the DF64 Gen 2 with the SSP High Uniformity Burst and this combination here together just produces a really nice shot. But as you might be able to notice from the pressure gauge here, it does go a little bit above 9 bars and this is because the pump that the machine uses is a pretty standard pump. Uh, many manufacturers like to have a higher pressure than 9 bars uh, so it can work with uh, these uh, ESE pots or uh, pressurized baskets. In the specialty coffee world, 9 bars has long been a kind of uh, standard, but a few years ago that started to get challenged. Uh, some baristas advocated for brewing at 6 bars instead. Uh, that should give better consistency from shot to shot. But on the other hand, there are people, uh, for example Matt Perger from Barista Hustle, who recommends going higher. Uh, even up to 12 bars. So that's just to say that the rule about 9 bars being ideal, it's probably more a rule of thumb uh, rather than something that's based on completely concrete uh, evidence. Of course it should be said that if you go above 9 bars you do need to have a lot better puck prep. The important thing to remember is that the pump doesn't engage fully unless it meets the resistance. So if you have a blind basket and you're trying to clean the machine by doing back flushing, yeah, then the pump will shoot up to 15 bars. But if you have a more standard espresso grind like I have here, then you get less pressure. Mostly I'm at a place where my shots are peaking at 12, 11 bars and then slowly declining. On something like a Gadget Classic Pro, you have an OPE that you can hack and that will uh, change the maximum pressure so you can decide if it should be 6 or 9 bars. The Gadget also comes uh, with a 15 bar pump uh, standard, but you don't have that option on this model here. What you can do, however, is uh, adjusting the water debit. There's this little screw here that uh, you can turn and uh, that actually means that you can dial in the flow rate a bit and playing with the water debit uh, actually means that you can control this uh, high pressure a little bit better. I reduced it down from the factory setting. The factory sets it at a pretty standard 400 milliliter per minute and I turned it down to around 280 milliliters per minute and that does seem to help uh, give me a little bit more consistency, avoid some channeling in the second part of the shot but overall I will say if you just have a good puck prep you use something like the Yumicut WDT tool then you're not going to experience a lot of uh, channeling of course also depends on the beans and a lot of other things but overall I will say yeah the pressure is a little bit high but you can manage it. It's not the fastest and most powerful steam wand around uh, but it's also not the slowest and uh, you get a pretty uh, consistent steam performance every time so it's not like it's running out of steam midway like uh, you will often experience with a single boiler machine like the Gadget Classic it has a very small boiler so it will run out of power midway through. With this machine here you can pretty much uh, get the same result. There's usually a little bit of uh, water coming out first, so it's a good idea to do a little perch, just like so. <laughs> so if you just run the steam wand for four to five seconds, then you can get rid of that. And then another thing I like about the steaming action here is that the display will also tell you how long you're steaming. And I actually find that it's quite consistent that I can just use this uh, display here and then after around 20 seconds I'll have the right temperature in my pitcher. Another cool thing, full 360 degree swivel of the steam wand. <laughs> And we're done 23 seconds, pretty consistent. And the texture looks okay. Not the most uh, beautiful milk in the world, but let's just try and see if we can pour anything. Okay, and we have a nice little tulip. Let's taste. I actually talked to Me Coffee and they said they would also supply a single hole steam tip. This one is three holes, but that single hole steam tip allegedly should make the pressure even better for steaming. But for me, this is totally fine. So to wrap it up, I think we have a new budget option that is uh, very hard to get around. If I compare it to budget kings like uh, Gadget Classic, Rain Silvia, even the Breville Bambino Plus, 
I think you just get a lot more value right away. There's no temperature serving, no purging, no waiting time between brewing and steaming. And you have adjustable temperature. You have 58 millimeter basket. So for me, it's really just a no brainer that even without the pre-infusion, I think I will take this machine here. Like the DF64, I'm sure there will be a nice little community out there on Facebook and other places who will share ideas about how to hack the machine, install OPVs or try to hack different parts. We've already seen the Cuff Machino project. Uh, they are able to really improve the functionality, add pressure profiling and stuff like that. So it should also be possible to fix these small quirks with the pre-infusion and the pump if you really want to do that. I wouldn't even be surprised if the next shipment that comes to me coffee will have a better pre-infusion effect than this one here. But on the other hand, I also know that me coffee has a Black Friday offer now that's really good. So if you want to grab that, then I'll put a link down below and then you can check it out. In my opinion, the good thing about this compared to the DF64 is that you actually don't have to do any modding uh, to get uh, good results out of the box. It just works pretty well when you open it. Yes, you can play a bit around with uh, water debit and uh, that will probably give you better results, but that's not really hacking, that's just uh, calibration. But I'm also really curious to hear what you think. Do you see this as a gadget killer? Could you have this at home? Or do you want something more sleek and Italian? Personally, I thought it was a little bit, I don't know, utilitarian looking when I first opened it, but it's starting to grow on me and I don't actually think it's looking that bad on your coffee station. Uh, let me know what you think about it down in the comment section below. And that's it for today. I will see you in another coffee video very soon.